Bible study. Today is June the 10th, 2020. And again, we just welcome you. I want to remind you that we are reopened in the, as a church and uh, our services on Sunday, uh, Sunday morning at 9.30 and also at 11.15. Uh, for those in the uh, Zoom Bible School or Zoom Sunday School classes, we encourage you to come and be with us at the uh, 1115 service. And for uh, everyone else and anyone else, we certainly invite you to either service that you're able to come to, and we would love to have you with us this Sunday. Uh, again, we just admonish you to pray for our nation, pray for our country, for our national leaders, for our uh, state and local leaders, as well as all the uh, stuff that's going on in our world today, all the riots and the uh, protest and uh, against our police officers and, and so forth is going on. We need much prayer as a nation, and I just really encourage all of us to be in prayer for our nation. Pray for revival in our land. It's only when uh, God moves in our land and our, our hearts are turned back to him will we see uh, things stabilized and uh, and hopefully much much better tonight we are beginning a new study in the book of Revelation I encourage you to not only uh, turn with me in the book of Revelation chapter 1 but also to invite uh, your friends uh, and anyone that would be interested in this study, uh, we will not be we're not planning on going through the whole book of Revelation. That would take a very, very long time. Uh, but we are planning on going up through chapter five, uh, and uh, and then uh, we hopefully will give you some insight uh, about the last days and the days in which we live, and and what God has on plan for us. So I encourage you to turn with me uh, to chapter 1, and we're just going to look at the first few verses, uh, and I will also be giving a, a, an introduction to the book of Revelation with some insight and some uh, information that will help us hopefully understand it better and, uh, and comprehend the things that are in this book a little better. Again, I uh, just want to remind you, if you'd like to give a gift, toward Cedar Grove Baptist Church. You can do so online at www.cedargrovebaptist.com. Uh, click on the online giving there, and also you can find these Facebook Lives there, uh, and, uh, and also some uh, former messages. Uh, we haven't been recording the messages since we haven't been able, able to have uh, our regular church services, but all our uh, since then, all our Sunday services have I have per, uh, used on Facebook Live. So you can go to our web uh, page and and uh, also our Facebook page, Cedar Grove Baptist Facebook page, and find those messages there. But if you'd like to give, click on the online giving there at cedargrovebaptist.com, or you can mail your gifts uh, to Cedar Grove Baptist Church, 1289 Cedar Road. Uh, Stamping Ground, Kentucky, 40379. So tonight, before we even begin, I would like for us to have a word of prayer before we begin in the book of Revelation. Father, we thank you for this time together. I pray, Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit would come and teach us as we go into your word and look at these events that's going to shortly come to pass according to your word. And we just pray tonight that uh, that you would stir the interest of your people in your word and in the truths of your word and help us to get into your word, study and prepare ourselves for what is to come. And so, Heavenly Father, we do pray also if there's any listening from time to time when we have these broadcasts, it's our prayer that some would come to faith in you and trust you as their Lord and Savior. But tonight, quicken our minds, open our hearts, and help us, Father, to say and do only those things that are pleasing in your sight for your glory and to lift up your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Tonight we begin in the book of Revelation. And this is a, a fascinating book. It's a book of 22 chapters. And in those chapters there are, there are 404 verses. 
Of those 404 verses, 283 of them have some reference to the Old Testament in some way. Uh, this is not a book of Revelation, the Revelation of St. John the Divine, uh, nor is it the book of Revelations. Uh, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ uh, found in verse 1. Uh, the outline of the book, and it's the only book in the Bible that gives its own outline, is found in verse 19 of chapter 1 of the book of, of Revelation. And, and, the, and it's given and broken out into three parts. Uh, the things which you have seen, chapter 1, the things which are, chapters 2 and 3, and the things which will take place after this, chapter 4 and on. Uh, notice in verse 1 of chapter 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the unveiling of Jesus Christ, who he is, what he's done, what he's doing, and what he's going to do. And then chapter 2 begins with uh, the angel, to the angel of the church at Ephesus, right? Uh, and then chapter 4 begins with after these things. That's your basic outline of the whole book of Revelation. In the King James translation, uh, every other chapter in the book, including chapter 3 and then chapters 5 on through 22, each chapter begins with and. In other words, it's a continuation. But the outline of the book is laid out in chapter 1, the things which you have seen, Chapter 2, the things that are, that is the seven churches of Asia, and, uh, and really, I believe, through the church age. And then the things that are after this, after these things, in chapter 4 on. And so, the breakdown of the book is very simple in some respects. Uh, the vision in, on the Isle of Patmos, chapter 1, the seven churches of Asia, as shown to John by the angel that the Lord had sent to him, his angel, and then the scenes in heaven, chapters 4 and 5, and that's as far as uh, I'm planning on at this time going into the book. Uh, I uh, have done a study through the book, but it takes a long time. So I want to uh, just show you some things about the sevens in the book. Seven is a prominent number in the book. Uh, the seven Beatitudes of Revelation. Chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed are, is he who reads and those who hear and keep the things that are written in this book. And then chapter 14, verse 13, there's a blessed. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. And chapter 16, verse 15, Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments lest he walk naked and, see, and they see his shame. Chapter 19, verse 9 says, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Chapter 20, verse 6 says, Blessed and old holy is he who has a part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And then chapter 22, in verse 7 says, Blessed is he who keeps the words of this prophecy of the book, of this book. And then chapter 22, verse uh, 14. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. The seven blessings found in the book of Revelation. Also, the, uh, the, seven, uh, uh, the sevens of Revelation, for example, I just gave you the seven blessings, but also the seven candlesticks, the seven churches, the seven stars or angels of those churches uh, or pastors, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, the seven vials or bowls, and then there's the seven personages. Then there's the seven dooms found in uh, chapter 17 through chapter 20 of religious Babylon, commercial Babylon, the Antichrist and false prophet, the Antichrist nations, Gog and Magog, Satan and the wicked dead. All these are doomed in the book of Revelation. Then the seven new things, the new heaven, the new earth, the new city, the new nations, the new river, 
the tree of life, and the new throne. All of these things are found in the book of Revelation. Revelation is, a, uh, the Greek word for, uh, for uh, translated revelation is apocalypse. And it means unveiling or to reveal. Genesis is the beginning of all things. Revelation is the consummation of all things. Genesis, we had the heaven and earth were created. In Revelation, there's a recreated new heaven and new earth. And the beginning of sin and rebellion is in Genesis. And the end of sin and rebellion, Revelation. The first murder is uh, in Genesis. And then the end of all murders in Revelation. The uh, man's cursed and woman's cursed and the earth is cursed in Genesis. But the curse is removed from man, removed from woman, and removed from the, uh, from the earth. Human government begins in Genesis and ends in Revelation when Christ himself has set up his kingdom. The beginning of sickness and sorrow is in Genesis. The end of sickness and sorrow is in Revelation. The first tears are ever shed in Genesis and the tears are wiped all wiped away in Revelation. The river in the midst of the garden is in Genesis and the river in the paradise of God is in Revelation. Satan the serpent appears and Satan the serpent in Revelation is destroyed. So there's many things that begin in Genesis and end in Revelation. God's wrapping things up. All the things that needs to be wrapped up are wrapped up in the book of Revelation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1, 1. The word God there is Elohim. And it means, El means a strong one with strength. Uh, the O, uh, O-H is the oath or to tell the truth of an oath. And then the, it's a plural form of the word. Uh, and so it simply means the three strong ones who tell the truth. Here in the beginning of the Bible, we have the revelation of the triune God. And in Revelation, we see the complete fullness of that when all things are turned back to God. In, Gen in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve sinned, and skin, uh, sin, the skin of an animal uh, was provided by God to give them a covering for their nakedness. Later, Abel took the first, uh, took the, uh, uh, a, uh, fl uh, from his flock to sacrifice to God a sacrifice as he worshiped him. Abraham took Isaac on the mountain and Isaac said, here's the fire, here's the wood, everything's here, but where's the sacrifice, where's the lamb? And Abraham <clears throat> returned with this answer in Genesis 22, 8. My son, God will provide for himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Moses, when coming out of Egypt, uh, uh, by God's command, state, uh, started the Passover uh, with a sacrifice of a lamb. In Exodus 12, 3, he mentioned, he said twice there, he says, you take a lamb and you set this lamb aside. And then in verses tw uh, 4 through 12, twice he called it the lamb. You take a lamb, now it's the lamb. And then in verse 5, he said, it's your lamb. And it's showing us that this lamb of God has to be personal. You have to take him as your lamb as sacrifice for your sins. And so five times is, uh, it's used there in, in, uh, uh, in uh, Exodus chapter 12. And, and that is a, uh, a, uh, the number five is a representative number for grace. God's grace. In John chapter 1, uh, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. In Revelation 5, 6, it says, And I look and behold in the midst of the throne and the four living, living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, and with seven spirits of God uh, sent out into all the earth. Jesus is the eternal theme of the Bible. The Bible is the book about Jesus from Genesis to Revelation. 
From Genesis, it's the hidden lamb. In Exodus, he's the lamb that was slain for our Passover. In John, he's revealed as the lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. In Revelation, he's exalted at the throne. He's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. Revelation reveals that Jesus Christ is the once crucified, ever living savior, king of kings and Lord of lords. His plan, his purpose, his power unfolds and he completes the circle uh, from eternity past to eternity future begin at, from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation. Well, that was the introduction. Now let's look in Genesis chapter 1 and begin in verse 1 through 3. Let's read what God's Word says. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show to his servants things that must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, to all things that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. Notice again that it says it's the revelation of Jesus Christ, not of St. John the Divine. God gave him, gave Jesus, uh, this revelation through, given through his angels to give to John uh, the Revelator. Now, uh, we read in, in Philippians 2, verse 7, when Jesus was on earth, it says that he made himself no reputation uh, but he emptied himself, taking on the form of a servant. You see, in Revelation is the unveiling. Uh, uh, you, it's to put up the window shades. It's to let the light come in. And the word signified uh, uh, is given in symbolic language. In other words, there are many symbols in the book of Revelation. That's one of the reasons we need to know some of the things that have transpired prior to that in the Old Testament. Uh, but it's symbolic, like signs and symbols are always explained somewhere else in the scripture. Let me give you a Bible lesson right now. This is, this is so important to understand because we've got so many people believing so many different things and they take it all from God's word, from the Bible. And, and, and this is a simple lesson. If you take this, you understand this, you grasp this, it can change the way you look at the Bible. You do not, I do not, no individual interprets the Bible. The Bible interprets itself. You do not interpret the scripture. You associate scripture. Scripture interprets scripture. And so if we understand that and, and, uh, and it's spiritual, interprets spiritual things. And, and the spirit man cannot receive the things uh, or excuse me, the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God in 1 Corinthians 2, 13 and 14. Notice that God gave these to Jesus. Remember in his earthly ministry, he said that no one knew uh, when the hour or the day, only the Father. But see, here we see that he, God, gave this to him to share with his servant John. Je uh, Jesus sent and signified it by his angel. This is not unusual. If you go back to the Old Testament, it was an angel that spoke to Moses and, and, and to many of the Old, uh, Old Testament prophets. God sent it, but the angel uh, exposed it to the individual. And so Jesus sent and signified it by his angel. If you read in the book of Daniel, uh, Daniel said, and I heard a man's voice, Daniel 8, 16. I heard a man's voice between the banks of the river and, uh, uh, who called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. And then in Daniel 9, 21, while I, I was speaking in prayer, um, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the, in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reach me about the time of the evening sacrifice. When Zacharias and Elizabeth was getting ready to have a baby, well, they didn't know it at the time, but the angel Gabriel went to Zacharias there in the temple and told him about John the Baptist and said, you won't be able to speak until this comes to pass. 
It was Gabriel that went to Mary and told her uh, that uh, she, uh, she was going to have this baby by the Holy Spirit. And, and so Gabriel, I believe, is the spokesman, the, sp the announcer, if you please, uh, uh, of the things of God to mankind. He sent by his angel to his servant, John. John then wrote and said to, uh, in verse 4, to the seven churches that are in Asia, which is today Turkey. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, uh, from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn among the dead, the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. From these seven churches that the message was sent to, then God has sent them down to you and I today. Uh, and so Daniel was told uh, in his prophecy to, in, in uh, Daniel 12 verse 4, he said to seal up or seal up the book until the time of the end. In other words, he said, don't tell it. Don't reveal what you have seen. But here in John was told, do not seal the works of the prophecy of this book, the words of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. Revelation 22 and verse 10. And so we uh, just reading God's word uh, is going to be a blessing because we see the promises of God coming to all of us uh, and to the reader and to the hearer and to those who keep the, the revelation of this book. In Revelation 22, 18, a warning is given to those who add to this book. Uh, he will be take, his, uh, take away his, uh, the words from this book takes away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things that are written in it. Revelation 22, 18 and 19. Blessed means happy. Uh, I have heard so many Christians over the years say, well, uh, I don't want to read Revelation. I don't understand Revelation. I'm afraid to read it and fear and all those things. Listen, blessed means happy. And God promised a blessing to those who would read hear or and, and obey the words of this prophecy. Uh, we should be a happy people as we study this book. And, and uh, if, we, if we understand it or not, we should be a happy people that God has revealed these promises to us uh, for the coming of the Lord, for, for uh, 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 justice finally being revealed in this world. Man, we need justice in this world. We need mercy in this world. And we have hope of victory in the end. We ought to be excited about that. We ought to be happy about, about that. And there again in verse 3 he says, For the time is near. Now, if the time was near 2,000 years ago when this prophecy was given, how much nearer is it today? Uh, I, I wanted to be, We need to be faithful. We need to pray that God would help us prepared for what he has prepared for us. Notice the word prophecy, uh, the prophecy of this book. The word prophecy simply means history beforehand history written beforehand. In other words, God's going to tell us what's going to happen before it happens. It's history beforehand. Seven times in this book, prophecy is mentioned. Verse 3 here, chapter 11, 19, 22, 20, uh, 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 three, four times in the uh, chapter 22. And keeps, he says, nine times in this book where keep is mentioned. We are to keep the words of this prophecy. Uh, I think we ought to hold them dear. We ought to uh, call them precious. Nine is the number for the fruit of the Spirit. And the time is near. Even though it was 2,000 years ago when it was written, it's near today. And I believe it's nearer than ever before. I've always said, since I was called to preach and surrendered to the call to preach back when I was 19 years old, I believed I would be preaching when Jesus comes back. Well, this September I'll be 72 and I still believe it. You see, Satan hates the scripture. He hates the scripture, but he hates especially Genesis, the foundation book of the Bible, 
and Revelation, this consummation book of the Bible. He attacks Genesis authenticity. He attacks uh, Revelation and he seeks to get us to neglect it, not read it, nor not even hear it or understand it. And so he attacks these two books, especially these two books. Now notice, notice again, this book is addressed to the seven churches which are in Asia, as he said there in verse 4, to the seven churches who are in Asia, uh, which we said are those churches uh, that, uh, that were in the, the region of Turkey of our day. Revelation is for us uh, today. Uh, Deuteronomy 29.29 29 says this, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the works of this law. God allowed us to have this revelation and as a blessing. And, and to ha have us and have this revealed, it belongs to us. The book of, of Revelation belongs to you and I, belongs to the church. Revelation is for us, a special class of people who should be acquainted with the word of God and have spiritual discernment to understand it. It's not for the world to know or understand, but it's for the local churches to know and understand. It's for God's people. Notice that this is uh, for the local churches. Notice these churches are in Asia. They're specifically named. They're, they're for these local churches. And we need to understand that that's what a real church is. It's a local band of baptized believers commissioned together to carry out the, com uh, the commands of Christ. And so, so it wasn't written to all churches, but these particular churches who had particular uh, problems that were representative churches and, and typical churches chosen uh, uh, chosen for their characteristics uh, that are typical throughout all generations, and yet there are dominant churches in that many of those generations down through time. They represent seven church periods, I believe, that defined in church history, as defined in church history. Notice, 19 times... In the book of Revelation, 19 times the word church is mentioned in uh, chapters 1 through chapter 3, verse 14. After that, and by the way, 19 is the number for faith. We're to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. After that, it's not found again until you get to chapter 22 and verse 16. And the 20th time which it, that name rep, uh, appears, it means redemption. And the church is finally and fully redeemed, returning with the Lord with power and great glory. The word church means assembly. It's a local band of baptized. You say, what about that? Well, that's a great assembly in heaven. Hebrews talks about that. Notice in verse 4, he says, grace and peace. When we receive grace from God, we also receive the peace of God from him who is, who was, and who is to come. This is speaking of God the Father, who was and is and is to come. Verse 5 reveals, uh, 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 reveals Jesus distinguished from the Father and from Jesus Christ. So it's not only from the Father, but it's and from Jesus Christ. But verse 8 claims the same attributes as God has for Jesus Christ. Notice verse 8. I want to just read it to you. Where Jesus is speaking, the Lord is speaking, and says, I am Alpha and Omega, Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was. And who is to come? The Almighty. So the same attributes for God the Father apply to God the Son, Jesus Christ. Notice it's from the seven spirits that are before the throne. You say, wait a minute, I thought there's only one Holy Spirit. He says seven spirits. Well, chapter 4, verse 5 says 
the seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now, wait a minute, what's he talking? Seven is a number for completion. And in Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, listen to what he says here, and we'll understand this better. He says, And there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. It's reference to Jesus who came through the lineage of Jesse and David and so forth. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Number one, the spirit of the Lord. Number two, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel and might and the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Seven, he's saying he's got the completeness, the completeness of the spirit. This is the spirit that rests upon Jesus during his earthly ministry. And uh, there is only one blessed Holy Spirit. But, it's, uh, he, uh, but this speaks of the sevenfold way he manifests himself. The word of wisdom, the knowledge, and so forth. How he reveals himself. And then he says in verse 5, uh, which we should read here. In verse 5 it says, And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. If you can't tell, I get a little excited sometimes, and I get excited when we're talking about Jesus. Notice verse 5 from Jesus Christ. Notice his threefold office here, the faithful witness. This speaks of his earthly ministry as a prophet who spoke the words of his father only. And then he said the firstborn from the dead. This speaks of his office as our high priest, uh, never to die again. He carried his own blood into the heavenlies and placed upon the mercy seat of heaven and that, that ever pointing and ever living is saying that this blood was shed for the sins of the world. And then he says the ruler over the kings of the earth. This speaks of his office as king. When he returns, he will come back as the king of all the earth, king of kings and lord of lords. As prophet, Jesus was the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was the faithful witness. As priest, uh, Jesus is God's lamb that takes away our sins. And then as king, Jesus is God, the lion, ruling with a rod of iron. Verses 5 and 6, he loved us. Oh, we say, well, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. He loved us. And the Bible tells us in John 13 and verse 1, and he loved them until the end. His love is enduring. His love is eternal. And he washed us uh, from the sins of his own blood. He washed us. He cleansed us. As we confess our sins, he faithfully and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And he made us. He loved us. He washed us. And he made us kings and priests unto our God. We need no human priest today. Well, uh, uh, we have been made priests of Christ through Christ to approach God for ourselves. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. We as believers in Christ Jesus have been made priests, and that is we can intercede, we can approach God ourselves. We don't have to go to a priest on this earth. We don't have to find out and, and, and do all those things. Jesus gave the sacrifice, and we as priests can go to God each for ourselves and intercede for others. Therefore, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever, Amen and amen. I hope you've been encouraged in this first uh, introduction of the book of 
uh, revelation. I hope, I pray that it will be an encouragement to you to stick with us and go through uh, these chapters as we look into the book of, of Revelation. And so we're going to look next time beginning in verse 7. So I encourage you to go ahead and be reading chapter 1 as we look at it from week to week. May God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And remember, Jesus is coming soon. God bless you and good evening.